Hello everybody, my name is Joy and today I'm very excited because I'm kicking off my new series about bees. So if you're interested in what different types of bees exist, how they live, how they contribute to our ecosystem and how we can help them out a little bit, then please stay tuned for the following episodes. But today we are starting out with the carpenter bee. Now, this bee is a very important pollinator but has a very bad reputation due to its nesting habits and thieving ways. The female workers bore small holes into unpainted or unsealed wood in which they lay their eggs. The female eggs are laid first and the male eggs second, so that in spring the males emerge from the nest first. So they are ready to mate with the females once they come out. Another consequence of laying the eggs in this order is that the male larvae will be first on the menu for any predators such as woodpeckers or lizards. That is, if these invaders can reach them. Here are some examples of what these tunnels look like. It's not simply a straight line to the eggs, and the carpenter bee sections off little chambers which he provides with bee bread, a mixture of nectar and pollen. These holes can be reused by later generations, which dig a little bit deeper every time. Now this is where the carpenter bee can form an inconvenience for people. You can imagine that the structural integrity of your shed is compromised if it's filled with tiny little holes. However, by simply painting over the wood or sealing it otherwise, you are deterring these bees from nesting there to begin with. So there is no need to break out the poison. Robin Thorpe, who was a native pollinator specialist and distinguished emeritus of entomology at the University of California, urged us that any damage caused by them, carpenter bees, should be weighed against their positive contributions in trying to determine whether to attempt to control them or not. Carpenter bees also have the habit of chewing their way into smaller flowers their relatively big bodies don't fit in, essentially stealing the nectar without being helpful in the pollination process. An example of this would be the blueberry flower, which is very, very small. So the carpenter bees will simply chew around the flower, take out the nectar and leave the poor blueberry bee very disappointed. However, these bad boys are otherwise excellent pollinators and contribute a great deal to the preservation of plant life. They really are misunderstood sensitive souls as the males cannot sting and the females rarely do. They are repelled by loud music and the smell of citrus, so no need to break out the toxins or the traps if they made their home in your shed. The worst they are likely to do to you is fly in your face as you come to close to the nest, because these bees are territorial. Thank you so much for watching. Next up is the bumblebee, one of my personal favorites. But feel free to give me any suggestions about different types of bees or behaviors or any questions that you may have, because I would love to expand on this series as much as I can. I love talking about bees. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.